Physics are one of the things that I see a lot of people having a pretty hard time with in Pi game. Uh, I know it's something that gave me a hard time for a while, and I thought I would do a video explaining how the physics I use work and go into depth about that and actually give an example of it in action. So, say you've got a player right here, so here's our player, and they're moving plus 20 on the x-axis and um, plus 10 on the y-axis. So something that a lot of people forget in the first place with Pi game is that the window um, has positive y going down. It flips the y-axis, so positive y is going th that way. Um, so a lot of people will try to add uh, 20 to the well, x right off the bat and also 20 to the y and then do the detection but I, I found that the easiest way to do it is to do the detection one axis at a time so you would move on the x-axis your 20 of whatever units usually pixels um, and then you would run a detection right here and check for collisions and handle it and then you would uh, move the other 10 and check for collisions uh, and you would be like in, probably about inside of this at that point um, and then using that it's a lot simpler to adjust the position because you know where you hit the block from Whereas if you're going diagonal, you can do all this weird stuff trying to get it to pop out on a certain side and causes some weird problems. And especially if you're to go straight into this corner right here, that'll give you a lot of problems if you're trying to um, set it up so it handles both the movement on the x-axis and the y-axis at the same time. So yeah, uh, th the way I like to do it is where you have it move across the x-axis, you check if there's any collisions, you adjust the position based on the collisions, and then you handle the y-axis. So in the end, since there's no collisions here, it'll go the full x-distance. And then when you move here, you'll actually probably go down into here a bit, but then it'll check for collisions here, and then it'll move it back up to the top of this block because it knows it's moving down. Since it's moving down, the only way it, um, it could have come in is from this wall right here. So you can just push it back up to here so that the bottom edge of the uh, plate or whatever object you're moving is on the top of this block. So what you end up with after that is going to be like something right here. here let me change my color. Something right here is where the player is going to be a little bigger than that something like that, I don't know. Um, and that's in concept how it works. It makes the calculations very simple. Uh, so now I'm going to code that. Um, also, another thing is that this, when you try to handle both ac axes, or what, I forgot, um, at the same time, and there's multiple tiles, you're going to run into some other problems when it hits multiple tiles at once and does some weird stuff. Whereas with this, you just check for any collisions and then you use the same processing on all of them. It'll always pop you out at the right spot because of the fact that it's handling one axis at a time. So first of all, we need our player for this example. So our player is going to be a Pygame Rect class, which is just a rectangle. It can do collisions and stuff and it has some other properties that are useful for like managing these edges and its location. So I'm going to make it like 100 by 200 pixels. Oh, that's the location. So I'm going to start it at 100 and 100. I'm going to make it 100 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall. So if I were to display this, um, yeah, and all this code is just some basic stuff setting up. This is setting up the window, and then this is just a basic of a, um, game loop. But yeah, if I were to render this rect onto the screen as white, You would see it here. This is just some basic Pi game stuff. There's their player or whatever. And um, 
we're also going to want some tiles. So, uh, what? I'm gonna do it like this. Um, so I'm gonna make a rect at. Mm, let's do 200, 150, 50 by 50. And then I'm gonna put one at 260. So there's like a 10 pixel gap between them. So I'm gonna render all the tiles here for tile in tiles. Pi game dot draw dot rect screen. And then I'm gonna make this red. So now I've got two tiles. Actually, I'm gonna lower those down a bit. Um, let's put them at 300. So now we've got two tiles here. It, it's sufficient for test inclusions. Actually, I'm gonna shrink the player a bit, make it a bit more reasonable. Um, 50 by 80 seems fine. Uh, 40. There we go. So let's test it with that. Um, so first thing is we need to be able to detect when there are collisions, which is super easy in Pygame. I'm just going to create a function here. So uh, I'm going to call it collision test. And the arguments are going to be the um, uh, rectangle you're testing and then all the tiles you want to see if it's colliding with. So you want to start out with a list of tiles that it'll um, it's collided with, um, uh, and by default it's going to be an empty list because it hasn't collided with anything yet since it hasn't tested yet. So you go through all the tiles in the tiles, and then you use the um, uh, the game dot rect dot collide rect function to see if there's any collisions. So it'll just take this, the rect rect, um, which is this argument right here, and check if it's collided with um, the tile. Well, um, and then if it has collided with the tile, it'll add it to the collisions. And then you're going to want to return the collision list. So now that we have this collision test, it just sees which tiles it's collided with. So I'm going to now see, uh, well, now do the actual physics itself where it adjusts the position based on the collisions. So since you're doing one axis at a time, it's going to run the collision test twice. But for the arguments of this, it's going to need the thing it's moving and the thing it's, and the thing it's colliding with. So it's the same arguments as the collision test, it's just since this is going to be called twice, I might as well, well make it a function so I don't have to write it twice. Um, oh, and you also need the movement you want. So you ha have the thing you're moving, how much you want to move it, and then uh, you have the things you want to do the collisions with. So first, you're going to want to move on the x-axis. So let's say that the movement... Um, is going to be in a um, list format, so like five or in two. That's how it's going to be handled. So you take the wait, the x value of the rect. You want to add to that the value of the x of the movement. So you're adding the this part of the movement, which is the x, to the rect x. That's accomplishing um, this part right here, just moving that. So now we want to test for the collisions. So collisions equal collision test rect tiles. And then um, for every tile in the collision, if the movement is more than zero, you know to set the right side of the player to the left side of the thing collided with. So in this case, I'm going to write rect dot, I believe right equals tile dot left. Uh, dot right and dot left are properties of the Pygame rect class, um, and you can use it to adjust the positions um, of certain parts of it. And it'll adjust the rest. And actually, wait, hold on, I made a mistake here. This needs to be if the movement is more than zero. And then 
if the movement, well, the x movement, so the movement zero, and if the movement of, on the x-axis is less than zero, you're going to set the um, left side of the rat to the right side of the tile. And then that'll, that covers um, this whole part right here, where it's on the collision, move, move the x-axis and then the collision test. So now we just move the right, well, the y-axis, and that's um, pretty much it. So you add the vertical portion of the movement to the player's y-axis, and then you test for the collisions, and then go through them, and then you set the y-coordinates based on the collision. So the rect dot bottom equals tile dot top is what I believe they're called. And then top equals bottom if it's going um, up. Uh, yeah, this, this, a lot of people may make the mistake of forgetting that um, the y-axis in Pi game is flipped, so you, you got to keep that in mind. Um, and then you can just return the rect. So now I'm just going to set up some uh, basic movement stuff here. So right equals false, left equals false up equals false, uh, down equals false, and then go into the event loop and just add these keys to this here. And now we've got those working, so we need to set the movement based on that and then actually handle the collisions. So. Let's do the collisions before we render the uh, players and stuff. So the movement is going to be by default zero zero. If right is true, movement zero is going to. Well, let's just add. Um, I think five is reasonable. And then if left is true, subtract five from the movement on the x-axis. And then um, if it's up. You subtract it from the y-axis, and then if it's down, you add it to the y-axis. Now that we've got our movement, uh, we've got all the parameters we need for us to use the move function we did up here. So, player, that's what I call it, right? Yep, player equals move, player, movement and the tiles. Okay. Oh, I, I see the mistake. Um, so I accidentally put pie game there and it's not supposed to say pie game because it's just a property of this um, rect object. Um, now let's see if the collisions are working. Uh, this is a bad frame rate. I'm gonna set this to 60. So let's see. See, look. Uh, I wrote ref. You gotta watch out for things like this. But they're typically easy to catch. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the collisions are working. You, I've got these two tiles right here. It's working fine. And then I can adjust the positions and it should still work properly. So I'm gonna lift up one of the tiles so it's a um, rather odd shape. Let's put this at 320 as the Y coordinate. So now this is a bit different. And you have this situation right here where you're colliding with two tiles. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. And yeah, um, I'll have all the uh, code for this in the description. Um, so you can use this too. Thanks for watching and uh, please uh, check out my other videos.